ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the low budget LCS. My name is Lachance, and for the first time ever, I am joined by my effervescent co caster, Vega. Hello, hello. How are you doing tonight, Lachance? Uh, dude, you know exactly how well I'm doing because we have spent the last, you know, eight minutes talking about Prime, uh, Prime Entertainment, which was made, you know, in the late 90s and early 2000s. Uh, so I might question. say the golden age. The golden age of entertainment, and uh, I'd go so as far to say storytelling in general. Uh, what were we talking about? We were talking about uh, Metabots, Fighting Food On, Yu Yu Hakusho, Hunter Hunter, uh, and of course, Street Sharks. The only place where you can get anthropomorphic shark men who could eat concrete. Where did the exactly. where did the street go? Because they it, were it, eating it's it hard the whole to time. go. We have preferably jumped the street shark. It, it's <laughs> all downhill since that content. Um, but we'll do our best tonight to match street shark levels of entertainment. Of course, of course. You know, uh, shoot for the moon, and you might hit the sharks. That's what they always say. I'm going to get that tattooed. <laughs> Good. Yeah, just keep collecting tattoos. <laughs> uh, oh, a Fia play friend. says, here for the drip, my guildie from EverQuest 2 is playing today. <laughs> what a game. What a callback. Some talk of that. inferior rats having an inferior performance. And some toe talk as well. Flame. I see you, little robot man. We love it. We love an active chat. Damn straight. Uh, also, thank you so much, uh, obviously, to you for following us, uh, Ohio Vega, but also Prof Hex. Thank you so much for being the newest investor in the low-budget LCS. We are waiting for an invite to the game, so we're just going to uh, hang out with you guys. Another friend. Uh, in the time being, Oafia plays. Thank you so much. I'm sure I said your name wrong before, but uh, thank you for the follow, man. Uh, so any other 90s hits? Was that your jam? Was like, what was your go-to Saturday mornings rolling around? You're looking for a show. Let's What's see. The... Big Digimon fan. Dude. Obviously. I wanted to be a contrarian at the time. and everybody loved... I mean, I did love Pokemon. But, you know, I wanted to be a little bit of a, you know, I like Digimon also. You know. Right. That's my stuff. Dude. Saturday or for Digimon, Pokemon, things like that. Friday nights were for Cartoon Network. Mm. Digimon Slap. That first Digimon movie. I don't know if you ever got a chance to see that. Yes. I had that shit. Oh, my God. Prof Hex Beetleborgs. Of course. Of oh course. Oh, my gosh. Yes, Beetleborgs. Dude. Oh, my God. Wait a second. I need to. You just awoke into sense memory. It's like me. a core memory. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh. Beetleborgs. Oh my god. Uh, you know what? Better than Power Rangers. I I think by a landslide. That's tough. That's tough. I know Mighty that Mighty Morphin? I maybe the later. Uh, I don't know. Mighty Morphin's pretty good. That's fair. That's that's fair. Once we start getting to like having a chartreuse ranger and Yeah, know, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. I'm yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It I'm gets out. it gets pretty uh pretty deep. Prof Hex, not a lot of people do remember. We were just talking about uh, uh, shows that very few people remember. Beyblade 2. Yes. Oh, good. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, dude, the, the formula for making a sick show in the 90s and early 2000s was just like, give kids a really insanely dangerous power or weapon. <laughs> I loved that. So Metabots... The idea is that everybody has a little android bot that, uh, not an android, because no part of it was human, but you basically right, right. had these robots that followed you around and kids would like battle in the playground and depending on what, and there were like three foot tall robots. So like whatever chip you put into the robot would sort of like determine its spirit or you know some, some sort of shit. And you're probably wondering, how were they battling? Were they arm wrestling? Perhaps they were playing Parcheesi or Rock, Paper, Scissors, Shoot. No. Machine guns and missile launchers. That's how they fucking fought. It was insane. Yeah, it was amazing. The main one was like a beetle 
something, I think. I can't remember yes. the exact. He was like a Hercules, Hercules beetle. Was Hercules beetle. That's what it was. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Dude. Amazing show. Oh, my God. Incredible. Yeah. And the, the his horns, his Hercules beetle horns shot missiles out of them. Yes. They shot actual rockets out of them. Yes. Because that's how children should spend their time is by, you know, having powerful, powerful military hardware uh, attacking us. Uh, hot damn talking about Metabots and a 90s television show summoned Itty Bitty Banshee and a party of 66. What's up, guys? Thanks so much for swinging through. Shout Listen. out to my girlfriend for rating us. Oh, hell yeah. Thank you so <laughs> much. Appreciate uh, uh, appreciate the party swinging on through. I hope that some of you guys are also enthusiastic about uh, Metabots, Street Sharks, Beyblades, some of the others. Oh, Bionicles is something. That Bionicles was amazing. Oh, do you ever have any Bionicles action figures? Yes, I remember like being on the jungle gym on like the playground and like making the Bionicle, fighting with my friends to knock their mask off while hanging from like a jungle gym. Oh, it was about the mask, wasn't it? it, it Gotta get their mask off. Right. Did that kill them? <laughs> I, did I, it... I don't know. I don't know exactly. I, uh, I feel like I remember the stakes the lore. being drastic and dangerous i feel like uh i feel like the stakes of having your mask knocked off was similar to another friend Yu-Gi-Oh banishing you to the spirit realm yeah um the uh the shadow realm the shadow realm the do yeah 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 it's uh they're yes. essentially killing you you're essentially done have but... you did you have you read the other Yu-Gi-Oh manga like the one where he like the one where he people. like yeah fucking kills yeah people. yeah, for, yeah for, <laughs> i was like i was like this yes. is, they're like playing a game of like poker and the guy losing he's like well you know you essentially like lost your eyes it's Ex like what yes. is happening yes a hundred percent yes they they played a game very early on uh where they would uh have a handful of bills and of course listen this is the only way to solve any sort of argument so you know Another put this friend. in your back pocket but he took out a switchblade and he was like you can keep as much money as you can stab with the knife through the stack of bills that's in your hand so they play this game back and forth Yu-Gi-Oh of course ends up uh, winning and then he breaks this guy's mind so that all he sees is money around him and you get a scene afterwards where like the guy's being committed like everyone shows up to school yeah. the next day and he's just rolling around in the leaves like <laughs> just totally destroyed she was like that guy's life is ruined it was fucking crazy monster rancher 2 that's another good one. Oh yeah i think monster rancher was the thing i always read about in like game informer and was like i would love this and then i never bought it yes yeah, I caught I caught uh, snippets of it. I mean, it followed the the successful formula of like this. Uh, you know, again, you're collecting a thing or you're fighting through some sort of proxy. Yeah, it was sick. What else have people said? Hamtaro, Bakugan. Hamtaro's great. Oh, Hamtaro was just adorable. Great theme song. Wait, great roses. Do you guys remember when Bionicle tried to make a sport? No? Could you I do not remember that. Refresh our memory, please. Please, yes. Uh, also, thank you so much, uh, Disco Pixie, Excellent, and David Wabi for being the newest investors in the low-budget LCS. We will see you at the board meetings in Vermont at the Denny's. You got to go around back, talk to our buddy Todd. He's the assistant manager. He'll let you in. Pancakes are on us. Thank you guys so much for the follows. Oh, Tamagotchis. Oh, Sammy, we talked about Zoids. Yeah, we talked about Zoids pre-show. Another friend. Zoids is great. That was like peak morning. My mom used to, it came on at 7.30 and I got on the bus at 7.15. So I would watch the first half and then my mom would record the second half and I would come home from school and finish the episode. Dude. Uh, just, just a brilliant, uh, just a brilliant idea to be like, let's take animals. We are going to attach rocket launchers. Oh, yeah, Liger Zero. 
Lampy Lamp Live? Yes, dude. Absolutely. He had <laughs> blades that came out of him, right? That's why he was special? Yeah, he had, like, all the forms, too. You had, like, the one where he was, like, a tank, and the one where he was, like, really fast, and the one with all the blades on it. Right. Okay, hold on. Roses got back to us. It was, like, the very last Bionicle line. The gimmick was they were on some weird planet playing this gladiator sport, which was basically rugby? They had shooters to launch the ball around, and I think you did damage by hitting people with the ball. I do kind of remember that. I vaguely remember that existing. Was it, did it happen over lava? I feel like it's there was- It's Bionicles, everything was over lava. That's a good point. There it was- Every, every seed was over lava. Yeah, that's Or that's in a true. jungle. They did a great job of like, Bionicles did a very weird, it was like weirdly good storytelling where like every kind of mask had its own culture. So you had like mm -hmm. the water Bionicles who were like living on these cool little like raised houses in the ocean. Um, and like the forest Bionicles were, you know, in the trees and stuff. And I don't know, it just like, there was genuine world building. Yeah, uh, way, way above its pay grade of like, having lore versus what you would expect it to have totally totally whereas and i apologize if if someone wants to correct me on this i feel like uh i feel like beyblade didn't really do any world building at all it was just like we're kids we've got these spinning tops the tops have gods inside of them and that's it and we're going to continue to fight each other in new environments and i don't know I just I don't, I don't feel like I understood the world of Beyblades as well. Yeah, I don't know if it goes very deep beyond like there's new people with stronger Beyblades and now we have to beat them. Right. In a new location that we went to off screen. Right. Yes. Yeah, it's uh it must have been an incredible time to be a writer. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> just like really 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 got to go nuts um in my opinion nothing as good as mobile fighter g gundam and mighty oh Morphin power rangers g gundam Another is like friend. part of it is just because it's so ridiculous i don't know if you've seen it but I... the premise is like every go country has a gundam <gasps> oh it's that one yeah so oh, like you have like yes! The, you know, America has like the, I think it's like Maxter Gundam or something, but it's piloted by a guy named Jiminy Preckett or something. Yes. And he's like the most American guy ever. Like the Gundam has like a football helmet on. Dude, wait. Oh my God. Yes, of course. And Japan had the, the Gundam with the burning hand. It was a little bit racist, excellent. I'm pretty you're, sure you're Japan, totally I'm right. pretty sure Mexico had tequila Gundam. Yeah. I could be wrong, and but I remember being a kid be like, what is that? Spain's Gundam was just a giant ball. Like the chest was just a huge. <laughs> My favorite is like one of the bad guys had a Gundam and his horse had a Gundam that was a giant horse robot. Oh my god! Hey, and what I'm was like, the plot of that one? Why were they fighting each other? Why did every country like, have one big robot? That's just how they like settled disputes, I think. Um, but yeah, and Tequila Gundam had a giant sombrero it would throw. Oh Jesus! Um, it was like way over the top. <laughs> Holy God. Um, but the music and voice acting was great. I I remember it scratching a real itch of just like new powers every time I saw a thing. And like you always got to see the, uh, you know, the Japanese Gundam with like the burning hand. Like so cool. Dude, it was so cool. I actually had an action. Wow, this is I had you could take the hand off and put another hand in. Dude, yes. Yeah. Did we you buy the, the exact same off. toys as kids? I'm pretty <laughs> you sure. You could take the hand off and put the, the glowing hand in. Yes. Yes. The hand, which now that I'm thinking about it, was basically used to like crush and kill. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Like, just grabbed him in the face. It's like a horrifying kill. reality. All of these shows had horrifying realities. They just don't make shows like that anymore. They don't. They don't. And some of it is for good reason, but others, you know, <laughs> it'd be great to Oh, Legends of the Hidden Temple. That was a that was a throwback as well. That's just crazy. In retrospect, watching it, you're like, 
wow, like there was a producer and like a director for the show. Oh, People yeah. People have this on their IMDb. Yeah, somebody pitched that show and and it got made. Rosa says its <laughs> name was literally Tequila Gundam. Yeah, that's, that's, I think that's the craziest one. I, if I remember correctly, that's the craziest one. That is really wild. That is really, really wild. Um, God, you know, old, old animes work. They just don't make it like they used to. No, no, they do not. Um, there's a, there's like, you know, as the internet was kind of like getting more uh, flushed out, I remember be, like slowly being able to find bits and pieces of these episodes. Bartholomew, mm-hmm. Meal, we're going to get to this game soon. We've just got the other team rolling in right now. I see uh, I see people uh, sliding into home base. Bartholomew's? Bartholomew's? Thanks, man. We love you, too. Hey, we love you. Thanks for stopping by. Now, uh, most people don't remember this show, but... Hold on one second. Blocked it. Okay. But on Toonami, after Dragon Ball Z, the show where characters were in a city called Mainframe, and they had to fight a bad guy who was a virus, and the show was called Reboot. I don't I vaguely think I remember saw that. that one. I'm going to look that up real quick. I remember Toonami having, like, their own, like, story stuff happening, too, outside, where, like, the ship would get attacked, mm. and, like, oh, Tom yes. would have to, like, fix it and do stuff. Um, yeah. It was very meta. Yeah, it was really weird. Also, it was super weird watching, like, being an adult now and like watching old clips and being like, that's Spike Spiegel. He's the same guy. He's not even doing a different voice. Tom is Spike Spiegel. <laughs> oh shit, Code Lyoko as I, well. I like Code Lyoko because it's representation for people like me with giant heads. Perfect. That's important. You we, have a big forehead, Code Lyoko's for you. Yeah, man. You need it's important to see a representation of yourself and uh <laughs> Code Lyoko is able to to scratch that itch. Now that that was a banger. Uh, also, I looked up reboot, and the animation is wild. It's like <laughs> I don't even—that's one way to put it. Yeah, yeah. It's honest. It's haunting. It's a little haunting. Um, the main also, character always, it's always scares me. Like I, this is like something you would see like if you had like a sleep paralysis demon. Oh, for sure. Is the main character this purple guy I'm looking at? Yeah, I think so. Who has like the seaweed hair? Yeah. All right. If you guys Google reboot 90s TV show, you'll find yourself (laughs) face to face with a horrifying visage. Um, Rune. Oh, Total Drama Island. I never really watched a lot of that, but I heard that it was very good. It was a little bit past me. It was just like a little bit past when it came out and got popular, like a little bit past when I was watching everything. Dude, same. Same for sure. I um uh, I have a little brother who's ten years younger than me, so I got like a weird uh, wrap around to like I would see some of the stuff that he watched, um, but I think it actually even wasn't. I think he like even was just like aware of that, but it, it had long since passed. I have my daughter's ten, so I have like the weird gray area in the middle. Nice. Where like sure. I watch stuff and then I miss it, but now I've watched like Flapjack and like all this Dude, other stuff. Dude, how like how uh, how is it watching all these shows? Like, do you look at what your daughter's watching and being like, oh, I see the connection, or is it just it, well, they're in a completely different universe? I just understand how my parents feel now when I made <laughs> them watch anime. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, that's beautiful. All right, it does seem like draft is getting underway. They dropped a link for us in the chat there I'm mm-hmm. gonna do my darndest to get this they're going rapid fire right. well it's because they're professionals they're professional oh my gosh the draft I- chef's kiss draft overlay by the way i didn't get a chance to say it oh thank you <laughs> thank you thank you we specialize in absolute nonsense um Okay, perfect. Did I do this right? Let's find out. Let's find out. I don't think so. Oh, no, they're, they, I did. Okay, perfect. We have got draft up. Uh, folks, this is a financial league group B game. We have got Tree Gang versus 
Dirty Rats Xfinity. Um, and here we are. We're off. What do you think of these bands, man? Uh, so far, I, I think pretty standard. A little bit more targeted. Dirty Rats Xfinity towards Tree Gang. Um, they've had Swain Ash Band in every game they played last week. J4, they played one game, popped off on it, so doesn't surprise me. And on the other side, it's all the annoying champs you don't want to play against in competitive. Yeah, this is... Uh... Oh, hold on. Stream's freaking Oop. out. This is our first time working together, but you should know I'm very bad at uh, at operating this stream. But I do my best every day, and that's all You're you doing can great. ask from me. You can't disappoint us. Perfect. Meme or six um... months reading this. Okay, we're back. We Ezreal do have Yumi. Yeah, Ezreal Seraphine. They've played Ezreal now every game Tree King has. Um, so definitely a comfort pick for them. Um, they did play Seraphine last week. Um, Mod Daryl, they're asking, is Yumi disabled? Uh, that is going to be a thing. I think... I think that there's a post about it in the... Yes. Yes, it is. It is disabled right now. You gotta pick something else. Thank you, Mobron, as well. Appreciate Good you. Good call, man. guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so this is a uh, uh, thing that we do in the LBLCS when there's a sort of significant change to a champion. We push it back by a week. Uh, so that um, uh, so that teams have some time to get used to it. So let's see how they're going to resolve this. Looks like they want to remake with the same bands. That's what I'm seeing. Yes, I see we need an adult. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Can we blame Dirty Rats? Their name is Dirty Rats. That's okay, true. Okay, they have to test the limits of the rules Absolutely. where they can and... You know, at least they called themselves out in the chat. Yeah, nature over nurture. We got another draft link right here. <laughs> we can now oh, talk about good. and look like we're, you know, premonition about the draft. Like, I'm really thinking they're going to ban probably the Jarvan, Swain, and Ash here. Wow. Uh, Interesting. You know, just, a, just a hunch. Just a hunch. No, listen, um, you sound confident, man. I would listen to you. Yeah. I trust I think guy. you got to take Anivia away. Anivia is so good at zone control. Really in soul on this patch. So sure. strong. Yeah, yeah, you know? of and course. And if I had to pick a six ban, <laughs> probably Shin. Probably Pretty Shin. annoying. Okay. Pretty annoying yeah. champ. Ba yeah. Bartholomos, uh in the chat agrees with you as well. So it seems like a lot of... Uh, uh, a lot of uh, concise discourse here, and it seems like we're all on the same page. Wow, would you look at that? <laughs> wow, we we might go six for six on these bands. This is crazy, man. I've never seen this happen before. Now I, now we go into the unknown realm, but I don't know what's going to be first picked. Anymore. I'll tell you what, it's not going to be Yumi. It's Jinx. Very good on this patch. We did see the Jinx buffs come through in this last patch. Her scaling attack speed, her W mana, and now her ult does 1,200 damage at max level. So she can steal your dragons and barons again. Be afraid. All right, the Ezreal. I'm guessing Seraphine. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say Seraphine's a comfort pick. Dude, don't strain yourself. Don't strain I, yourself. I don't want to do it all in the first game. You know? <laughs> of course, of course. No, this is... All of my tumultuous research to get to this point. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, you know, you did, you did look I into did, these guys. I actually did do a little bit of research, but yeah. we're almost at the extent of it. Listen, credit, credit where credit is due. Real prediction: I do think there will be a Lissandra somewhere in this draft. Okay, I love That's it. Just, I, if it happens, great. If it doesn't happen, well, don't worry about it. It doesn't happen. Yeah, you yeah. don't worry about it, guys. Yeah, easy peasy. Um, what, uh, what, uh, begs the Lissandra, in your opinion, into this game? Um, I'm playing statistics, and Tree Gang has played it in both of their other games. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm playing the statistics game of, we've not seen another mid, and I trust that they just like that pick. Absolutely. But it's always weird after week one because I feel like a lot of teams in preseason, they kind of have that echo chamber of what they like, what they don't like. Then you play your first week and you're like, oh, mm -hmm. now we're going to adjust because we've played a real game and we kind of know what works and what doesn't, right? 100%. Any league is always just, you know, uh, reality comes crashing in into 
the cross section between what are you very comfortable with, what do you guys know what to play with, and then also what's gonna work and what are other people doing. Um, so we'll see. Now this Olaf though, Ooh. maybe makes that Lissandra seem a little bit less. Uh, it's definitely not as good. Not as good. I mean, but what are you gonna do? Draft no more CC once you see an Olaf? You True. still need it. Um, we do see the Poppy come through, which I think is a little bit of more of a denial pick or maybe comfort because, you know, obviously Karma, Jinx, Olaf don't have dashes themselves, but it kind of pushes you to be like, okay, I don't want to pick a lot of like dashing engage or high mobility champions now that there is a Poppy. Right. You know, so it helps, you know, push those things out. Um, but unsurprisingly, like most games, we have bot lane and theoretically maybe jungle picked here with Olaf and Poppy. Olaf has been top a little bit more lately, but... We'll see. Yeah, we're still, uh, you know, uh, uh, these drafts can go in a, in a bunch of different directions. That Fiora mm -hmm. getting banned out. Interesting. We th what do you think this is a poppy jungle, poppy top? Where, uh, where are you thinking this is? I feel like poppy gets played more jungle, but you never know. And what I love about tournaments like this mm -hmm. and leagues like this is you get people that are just like, they're like, you know, they love Poppy Top. That's their thing. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, so you never know. But if I had to guess, put money on it, I would lean towards a Poppy Jungle. I think she's better there. Really good ganker. Um, and her clear's fine. She can get the job done. She can do it. All right. We'll see. We'll a lot see. of mid lane bands. Yeah, very much so. You think these are, uh, these are targeted bands against the player, or this is just things the team doesn't enjoy playing against it could be both i know cass and annie are both really good right now mm. um and if you're a team that likes playing any kind of tank top laner you're going to take fiora out of the mix um just because you know fiora's hyper annoying to play against um silas all around is good champ right now mm. um but yeah i think more the cast and annie band just seem like good meta mid bands right now for sure Ooh, nocturne, nocturne. <laughs> Love to see Nocturne. Nocturne's so fun to watch. Spooky. He is a <laughs> blast, though. Ooh, and a Talia. This is spicy. This is a fun draft. Yeah, I like this a lot. Just some interesting ideas bouncing around here. Um, that seems to think it's Poppy support Seraphine mid. Okay. All right. We're gonna we're gonna write that one down. We're gonna see what pans out. Yeah. Got this scion here. I, I really like Dirty Rat's comp. And Tree Gang too. I wanna see how they round out this comp because normally with Nocturne you want some kind of dive buddy or something that can at least give Nocturne space to operate. Totally. Um We'll oh. see. Seraphine very good though, because if Nocturne dives in, obviously a Seraphine ult can chain through your team onto him. Um but yeah, I'm really excited at what this is. <gasps> hey, hold on. Will they lock, lock it, it in? Lock it. That's hey! what's up. Okay. All right. Vega okay, looking we're like we're a one real for one on real here. predictions. We're one for one on real predictions. Nah, man. I'm um, counting all. I'm counting the second draft <laughs> as all real predictions too. You're seven for seven. Okay. Okay. Um, um I, I actually don't dislike that pick, even though the Olaf's not great with it. Hmm. Um. It, can, it makes it really easy for Nocturne with Talia, right? It's yeah. very easy to Lissandra, R, the Talia, ult in, get picks there. The only problem I see is they're kind of low damage into Scion. So mm. if Scion gets rolling in a big way, um, it can be a little bit problematic. But, you know, yeah. it's down to execution, right? Yeah. Uh, Zodiac. Oh, like Zodiac. I see what you did there, man. Uh, <laughs> making the good point, how does Tree Gang kill the scion um you know it's looking like time is going to be required yeah you gotta you gotta start stacking dragons quickly 100%. i think that's gonna be the name of the game for them also i am going to right now put out the predictions so feel free to bet uh we call our channel point schmeckles here feel free to bet as much or as little as you would like who will win Put your money in, guys. 
Put your money where your predictions are. <laughs> or wait, I want to say where your mouth is, but they're not talking. So put your money where your fingers are, I suppose. Perfect. We'll set that timer for five minutes. Go for it. All right. Um, Wolf saying, uh, saying the rats are gonna win. What else is chat saying? What what comps do they like here? I'm not gonna cast or curse anybody by saying I drastically like one better than the other. <laughs> sure. like that's You're just not gonna do someone to, to an all but like, certain loss. This comp is just so much better, and then they get like face rolled, and you're like, okay, well, I don't know what happened. Yeah. Um, every once in a while, I I forget and I say something, and then like clockwork, uh, the caster curse kicks in. Somebody we have too much power. I know. Too I much know. power to wield. Completely um, unearned, but we've got it. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's like getting keys to like a nice car at 16. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a disaster waiting to happen. Um, Our mom always loses, I feel, going all in on Tree King. <laughs> all right, Les Force, I see you. Yeah. Um, I think this game's really going to rely on what the first, if the first Nocturnal needs to be impactful, right? Mm. They, he needs to make a place somewhere to where Tree Gang can snowball into an early dragon and make that Scion come out of the top lane where he's trying to, you know, stack the HP with his W and get items earlier than he wants to. Mm -hmm. Does that show Nocturne and Nocturne for you? It does <laughs> i thought i was like it's my client book yeah, i was and like hold on a second we're and we're rolling back. it back we're back excellent look we have plenty of time to break down these drafts i didn't even know that was possible i didn't either yeah <laughs> I'm they're like confused looking, like, as well how is that i don't even know listen it's an indie company that. that put this together you know this game is held together with uh chewing <laughs> gum and paper clips i've I've watched a lot of games. I don't know that I've ever seen that. Yeah, that's the fun thing about the Klein is that it always <laughs> it always breaks in a new and exciting way every time. Looks like uh, last guy. They should have let it go through and let him not turn one v one. That would have been wild. I wouldn't even have been upset about that. Spaghetti code, indeed. Extra mm -hmm. pasta sauce tonight. Well, the good news is we get more time together in this wonderful pregame. Of course. And, Everybody uh, loves this pregame, right? That's what you're here yeah, for. Yeah, that's your favorite part. Yeah. Um, you don't want to watch League of Legends. You want to talk about, you know, uh, TV shows of your youth and potentially toys that you collected. And, of course, exactly. talking about this draft. Um, I just want to say it's a huge honor to cast 100 Thieves Double Lift. I'm just oh, going to yeah. really... You know, I know he started as a support Blitzcrank one trick. It's just good to see that he's kind of fleshed out his champion pool to some other things now. Yeah, I mean, the real beautiful thing is uh, I didn't think he'd have enough time to play in both leagues. And uh, yeah. he actually, he talked about not playing in the LCS and only playing in the LBLCS. And so it's a real big win for the LCS that he was able to have enough time in his, in his game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, you know, a, a lot of the players here moonlight, you know, as LCS players. So, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, nice yeah, yeah, to yeah. see that they can get a part-time gig outside of this, which is obviously <laughs> their full-time one. Yes, that is nice. Uh, people, you know, there's a lot of speculation as to why the LCS moved the times of the games earlier, and that was so <laughs> that we could better stream, uh, you know, the games at night for the LBLCS. So it's great that Riot Games is working hand-in-hand -hand with us. Yeah, we can't thank Riot enough for working with us, you know. Um... I love it. You know, just shout out to Riot. Thank you, guys. Making it making it easy. Making it easy. I, I have a good feeling. Actually, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to jinx it. Um, what happens if we're stuck in a sort of a, um, you know, I've come to bargain with you, Dormammu, uh, hellscape of, of a time cycle, and Nocturne is just double-picked the entire time? I don't know. I'm blowing through all my good content now. Me too, man. So... I'm fucking, I've got <laughs> six or seven phrases left, and then... We're on life support here. It's going to be like a loop. You guys are going to start seeing us cycle back to talking about metabots again. <laughs> it's going to feel like you started the stream over. We wrote that it's, whole you know. script about metabots and street sharks, and we use it too early. That's my bad. Okay, here's the yep. moment of truth. There's the Olaf. Okay. Well, we didn't really touch on it, but it is Poppy Top. Oh, shit. 
We didn't really touch on that, but it is oh. Poppy Top. Real quick, uh, Sammy, I do see you in the chat. I did see you've been talking about brain surgery for 20 minutes now. <laughs> the 8 a.m. surgery does work well for me. I have a dental cleaning at 930. If you could wrap up the surgery before then, that would be great. Um, wait, so Poppy's top. Oh, right. Okay, yes. That does that does make sense. That does make In sense. In a way, it might be better because looking at the enemy comp for what Poppy stops. Yeah. Does Poppy stop Talia? She knocks Talia off the ult, right? I assume if she's skating Great in. Great question. Is that a dash? But I think that's the only thing. Yeah. Because it doesn't stop Sion ult, no, you know. No. No, I think I think you're right. And I mean that's really effective drafting from Dirty Rats if they were keeping that in mind. Poppy was picked relatively early on, right? Yeah, and that's the danger of it, right? Is mm. if you pick a pick like Poppy who has a very clear what she wants to do in the game, um, you can draft around it. Um But, you know, sometimes comfort over, you know, compatibility with the comp, because if someone's just like a really good Poppy player, you're just like, it doesn't matter. They're good. They, they don't mind the matchup. They just want to play their champion. Right. Right. But yeah. we will see. Yeah. It, it's a great uh, It's a great Uno reverse card. Like, if you can last pick it into a comp that's got a ton of stuff that it can interact with, but it'll still perform a role here. Yeah, it's, her ult's still great. She still gets the stun to walls. All those are great things. She will get tanky. Um, so, I mean, it's still fine. I don't think it's terrible. The question is... Can it kind of, because this is always feels like the way with Scion, is it's almost like a ticking time bomb until mm. Scion becomes a walking tower around the map. Right. Um, and can Poppy really do anything to pressure old Scion? And we'll see, you know, I, I haven't seen the Poppy Scion matchup. I have no idea how it plays out. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm clueless. This is gonna be all new um, for me as well. I do just sort of, I, I think back to the comment that was made in the chat of just how how are we gonna get through the Scion, and I'm not I don't know if I'm seeing it. I think you got to have a real strong uh, early mid game and just like get ahead of it and then end the game before it becomes a problem. And you've got this, I wholeheartedly agree because you've also got to handle the the scaling Jinx right. Like that's also gonna scale. Mm -hmm. um, pretty effectively and, and you know karma doesn't just have to shield the the adc either you know they they can keep this uh dastardly scion alive as well so we'll we'll see i think you made a great point about lissandra being something that can dive in with the nocturne you know they do have a door to the back line um and you know hopefully for them they'll have enough damage um and coordination to, to eliminate targets and then I don't know. The rest of their team can come and save them because I do think they die after that. But we'll see. We'll yep. see as the I, game goes I, on. I think when I look at drafts and um, when I used to do coaching, one thing I like to think about with drafts is you want to give yourself options in the game, right? Where when I look at the rat side of their draft, they have some clear options like Talia can roam. She can make plays in both side lanes. Um, Olaf's a pretty early scrapping jungler, you know, who could be very annoying, especially into this comp. You know, the R kind of invalidates Lissandra and Seraphine to a degree. Mm. Whereas you see the tree draft, it's a little bit more direct what they're trying to do, mm -hmm. which is if, if I'm looking at their draft, I'm saying they want to dive bot lane, right? They want right. to push mid in, they want to take Lissandra Nocturne bot, and they want to dive. They want to make plays away from side as much as they can. Um, which if you do it well, is great. Your comp is set up wonderfully to do that, but you have a little bit more freedom on the rat side to be like, oh, we can play top, we can play bot, we have scaling great in both point. lanes. Talia can move, you know, and do things. So, um, I don't know. It's interesting because I always like seeing kind of the sword and shield comps where one team has to do a certain thing and the other yes. team has to weather that to get yes. to what they want to do. No, absolutely. Likewise, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think the caster curse will play into this. Uh, what do you think the odds are we're going to get a cross map steal from either of these teams? And who do you think is better suited to accomplish that? Um, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, I mean, Jinx is all now does 1200 damage to yeah. objectives. I, it's just so that's good. not nothing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's so good. I just, I have to put it on the Jinx. If I had to guess, 
just because um, it's just busted. I just <laughs> I've, I've playing jungle enough to hate jinx ults. Yeah, Ezreal. At least you're like, okay, if I smite correctly, I should get it. Right. Jinx ult. You're like, oh, it went to eleven hundred ninety eight. Right. <laughs> Guess Jinx just gets the, tr- right. the Baron. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the real question is, are the teams aware of this, and are they going to be uh, uh, conscious about that while they're doing these objectives? I don't even know if there's a way to... I mean, you pretty much just got to know where Jinx is, try and track the cooldown if you can, but once you're on the objective, you're you're kind of on the objective. You can kind of do the awkward. The, the problem is most of the times in most games when you're taking objectives like that, it's after a fight. Mm-hmm. And people don't really want to stand where they can get hit by Jinx ult. Right. Um, so you're very rarely like, yeah, AD carry, just stand in this direction and in the area where you could get engaged on or hit by a Jinx rocket. So it is awkward. And you also you, know, you get those adrenaline after, you know, oh, we're getting a bear and we're getting a dragon, you know, right. and you're not always checking every box you have to check, you know. It's, it's, it's hard, you know, when you're playing. For sure. And if they are conscious of it, I mean, at the very least, it'll, it'll act as a, as a passive and force them to do an objective from an awkward position. Um, yeah. Here's another question. Favorite skin that you see on the screen right now? This is tough because I'm old school. I played in season one. Haunting sure. Nocturne is just a great skin. It's a beaut. I mean, the ghost coming out of the queue. Broloff obviously has a special place in my heart. Oh, it's yeah. like the first like nice skin I ever bought. Um, but Project Jinx quality overall. Mm. Project Jinx is a great skin. Mm. Absolutely. Lest for saying there's nothing wrong with the classics. True that. Blade Queen of Sandra underrated, though. Now... That- I just got a thing that said, unable to download Spectator Client, the game will now exit. Did you get that? I also got that. Um... Good. Good. I'd like to point everyone towards the (laughs) title of our organization, which is the Low Budget LCS. Uh, We're going to try and reconnect. We'll just see what happens then. At least we didn't get the really cool bug where you get in and nothing ever loads. Ooh, sure. Where they're just the champions never appear, and you're like, okay, any time now. And you have to disconnect or reconnect to make fix it. But it's our fault. We said surely we'll get into it this game. That's true. Fuck. Surely there will be no more. We did it. We cursed it. Maybe we get it out of the way, though. If we just get the curse out right. of the way early. We front load it. Well, this will be its own adventure. Now, I've just got a wheel. Me too. I'm just sitting. All right. Cool. 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 Well. (laughs) League of Legends is getting played, I assume. Maybe. We assume. Who who even knows? All right. My next play. (laughs) Cool, 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 cool. My next, uh, for my next magic trick. I'm going to exit out of league and yeah, we'll do the same, yeah. just try. A, oh, wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh. Okay. I'm glad that we're seeing the same thing here. Um, It is still at 0%. No, we're in. We are in. We are on Summoner's Rift. That is surprising. Thank you uh, to whichever of our viewers was appropriately asking for the right, uh, you know, uh, divine powers. We appreciate that. I can finally hear it. Okay, perfect. All right, let's see. Another friend. All right, great. Wow. Someone. We We're in. Uh, someone just followed Fertile Stallion, a wild name, but great. Uh, thank you so much for being the newest investor in the low budget LCS. Another friend. Uh, incredible that people are deciding to follow us after a technical failure. Uh, thank you so much. We appreciate you dearly. Okay, lots. We try to emulate the LCS as much as we can Another here, okay? Friend. And that's pauses, that's audio technical difficulties. <laughs> if you get the full experience. Yes. Okay? 
Yes, the exact uh, the exact experience that you would receive there, you will Another receive friend. here. Uh, a truly, a mind blowing amount of people falling. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Time for a Kit Kat. Ain't it the truth? Is this viral guerrilla marketing for Kit Kat? Because it's working. Another friend. Yes, do you want a Kit Kat now? Yes. These are some great names, by the way. Bartholomew's, of course. We know you from the chat. You've been great. Big Sean, of course. We all know Big Sean. Uh, you've, you've seen him on the playground. Big dude. Another dunk. friend. An old skateboard. Also, we're all familiar with old skateboards. Fins for the win. I'm assuming a Street Sharks fan. Uh, Another friend. And then, of course, Natty Bug Fesho. I don't Definitely get that natty. one, but appreciate natty. you. Like a natty ice? That's yeah. I assume that, or they don't take steroids when they work out. That's the only other use of natty I've ever heard. We applaud you, whichever one of those things it is. Now, Either I'm one. Not, here's my question for you: What time is the clock on the pause for you? Oh, I've got the fun one where it's just showing everyone in the black screen. Hold on, I gotta reconnect. Okay. Oh, we're in. You're in. I'm in. There we go. Yeah, I'm moving. Yeah, yeah. I'm like a second behind you, so that's perfect. Beautiful. Okay. Excellent. And just like that, without a single hitch, we're into game one of Dirty Rats Xfinity vs. Tree Gang. This is the low-budget LCS, and we're extremely excited to have you guys here. Holy shit, it's paused again. We got some game like we can at least look at their level ones and kind of Right, what do you think oh. of these items? Ooh, Rhinel oh. in a bit of trouble right here trying to get yeah, a little bit of movement bit... speed second Olaf axe misses That's huge. Yeah, 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 but if you change the axes it can get really scary But being able to dodge out that second axe that's good a small kerfuffle on the borders of the jungles uh what do you think? Even information exchanged right there? Did anyone get the uh, get the the win? Um. Well, it, it's like a mind game, right? Because a lot of times you'll see junglers walk out top, do the ward base, and get sweeper. Mm -hmm. Um. So the question is, Olaf sees Nocturne, they see each other. Normally, what Olaf is doing is like what I would expect. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, okay, you know, they kind of just had a five point to see if there's an invade. He's got to go do blue, but Nocturne is actually going to start red. So there's a little bit of a mind game here of, did he base after we saw him and go to his blue with his bot lane, or right. is he red? But this is good for them because it kind of goes with what we talked about early, which is he's going to path bot side first. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, because if he tried to go for an invade, I'm not sure if he saw the ward get placed down, but uh, an invade from, from Nocturne would surely be caught out and put him in a bad spot. Oh, yeah. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Now, uh, I'm realizing that you and I, I haven't talked about what positions do you normally play in league? Where's your expertise? Oh. Um, I've played for a long time, so I've switched roles a lot, but mainly a I am a support AD carry main. Love it. Um, I love Hold the on, bot we got lane. a level two advantage down here in the bot lane to flash away from Cinnabon Bun, and now Ezreal is in a bit of a spot. Great rocket play from foreign guy there. Yeah, gotta exchange. respect that Jinx Karma ability to clear the wave early. Um, Rockets and Karma Q, they push incredibly fast and get that level two first, and they're able to get a flash out of it. Oh, great over the wall ward from uh, Safer right there. That's not always an yep. easy one to hit. Double lift, taking some damage. Nice trade, and I mean that's what Ezreal and Seraphine want to do, right? They want to whittle you down in the lane. They have the sustain, they have a lot of poke. They want to try to cut this wave so that Jinx and Karma can't get it all the way in and harass for free, get that priority. But mm. it is a little bit dangerous. I mean, they are free pushing right now. They do have a ward, but Nocturne is on the bot side of the map. Yeah, you uh, you called this a while ago, and I'm happy to once again see your predictions coming to light. Uh, Don't get used to it. <laughs> nah, dude, this is, I expect <laughs> this and only this. 100% correct predictions for the rest of the series. Uh, which, by the way, this is a best of three. Um for all the new folks here today. Now, um, these teams are, are playing pretty fast and loose. We're seeing a lot of poke exchanged right here, a lot of excitement in this oh. game one. Ooh, a nice zap landing. 
This is a big timing because this wave is bouncing back in bot lane. Nocturne is there, but we're also getting a counter gank on the top lane. Absolutely. Dyslexia walking in right here. A flash away from Poppy, but we cut back down to the bot lane. Foreign guy, will he get CC? No, actually makes it out of it and to safety under that tower. Great escape on both ends. <gasps> oh, <laughs> My poor That heart. is scary. Very much so. But situational awareness, uh, Sonic Skater gets a 10 on that test right there. Yes. Double lift oh. walking around. There's so many people with like a third health bar left. It's a, it's a dangerous time to, to be around the bot side. It is. Great we combo landed by Talia. Talia right there. Yeah, and this is really good for the bot lane of trees right now because your Ezreal, your Ezreal Seraphine and you have wave advantage and health advantage. Mm. There's no flashes on the enemy team. You can kind of freely poke right now. You know you know that you just saw Olaf top. At most, he's going to base and be down here, but they should be able to crash this wave and base with relative safety, and they start a tier on Ezreal, so that's huge to be able to get an early shove and base off. Absolutely. Olaf down here in the bot lane. Running around. Might come face to face with this Ezreal. That's one slow right there. Okay, he's jumped away. The axe got picked up. Another slow onto the Ezreal. He's trying to get away. Abilities being used. That's going to be exhaust. A flash from the Ezreal. All the escapes and more used to get him out of that predicament. They wanted that ward. A little bit of greed there. And <laughs> Olaf with the expert timing right there saying, this is crashing. This is my chance to get them before they base. And... Gets the sums out. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, Vega. These first five minutes have shown me that everybody in this game knows exactly what they're doing. I feel like I've seen all the plans play out in the way that the teams have sort of envisioned them to, and there have been excellent responses so far. Yeah, I mean, just it, it's really great to see that both teams really understand what they want to do with their comps. We see Olaf attack top lane, you know, where perceivably they want to get Cyan ahead. Vice versa, we see the Nocturne attack bot where they need to snowball and kind of this punch and counter punch that's been awesome. Yeah, absolutely. This first dragon Ooh. going down, we've got a bit of a noodle fight up here in the top lane. Although maybe they're low level enough that no one's no one's really a noodle just yet. Sonic Skater I think needs he, to get one more level. That early Ocean Drake is actually really important mm. because when you're playing stuff like Seraphine Ezreal where you're trying to poke, that little bit of extra tick of, oh, oh so we're gonna get on, mid. Sandra going in. Right here, we got Rhino coming around the corner. That's going to be the flash, the ult being dropped right there. Another flash from the Talia, but first blood will go to Nocturne. Well, we talked about in the early game that it depends on what Nocturne does with this level six. He says, forget that. I'll do it at level five. Gets the gank off mid lane, and that's huge. That's what they need. They need the snowball. Truly the unexpected move of, uh, you know, Ganking before level six and going for it. Speaking of level six, is that Scion using the old Sonic Skater absolutely championing that fight right there and an escape in the mid lane. A lot of things shown really fast there, but damn if that poppy headbutt wasn't a highlight for me. That was nice. Really nice interrupt on the Q, because if that Q lands, that's pretty much a guaranteed kill. Absolutely. Yeah, really, again, good situational awareness coming out of Sonic Skater. He knows what's in his pocket and what his plays can be. Yeah, these Talia combos are very nice. You, you got to think once, you know, a couple items in pocket there, those are going to start to hurt. Absolutely. And they've been landing nonstop. Look at this little cheeky trap we got right here. Double lift Biden is time. Oh, you love to see it. Seraphine saying, that's okay. I'm going to take a couple minions. I've earned them. Ooh, Spinning Olaf the exhaust. Is down here too. Ooh. This is Seraphine does have the flashback now, but Ezreal without it, no exhaust either, is gonna sniff out that ward. Yeah, at the very least, setting the stage for maybe some trouble further on. But the patience we're seeing from Karma, I mean, it's dedication. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> gotta take your hat off for it. Oh, the HP you get from that W, goodness. That was great. That's like your dream as a Scion on to one shot a wave that size with W. It really um, is. You don't see that often. Yeah, we do have Nocturne on level six now, so we're on Nocturne watch mm, yes. where this ult might go. Uh, there is no flash mid lane, and we do have Lissandra ult back up, so there will always be a target. Jinx flash not quite back up also, perhaps, but a little bit harder to attack that lane. They know Olaf was just down there, so their bot lane doesn't have prio yet. We're, that slap fight we just saw up in the top lane, pretty even. That 16% uh, 
max health on the Q from Poppy, which, by the way, somebody in chat told me. I did not remember that off the top of my head. I'm glad. I was like, wow, he knows that? <laughs> nah, dude, I definitely don't. <laughs> um, the pick makes more sense now. It's like, okay, if they pick a tank, maybe Poppy can do that. Ooh. Yeah, there is an answer. A lot of potential plays happening right here. Actually, in every single lane, we could get a kill in the next minute or two. Let's see what happens, though. Sion probably wants something to land nice. one of those. Oh, yeah. Something nice to point out is we did get first blood over to uh, the trees, but... There it is. Oh, the lights go out here? right onto the Talia, but an excellent play almost results in a return kill. Ooh. The clean Talia shove. Very nice job with that. Um, and, yeah, there's the failed Nocturnal. That's important because you only get so many of those in this early game as, mm -hmm. you know, Sion stacking and things, and Jinx is getting to items. So important that they are able to repel that. 100%. And I mean, just of course, showing us another full combo from Talia landing on Lissandra right here. More proof that Kigaris knows what they're doing. Yep. Oh, wow. Foreign guy walking up. That's one, two. Okay. Ooh. Olaf is top also. Nocturne's in the area. Zion ulting. It is going to land right there, but a great poppy ult's actually going to knock Olaf back. And now we've got a 1v2, but not in the way that Zion was expecting. Oh, Talia ulted up there as well. Ooh, I love that so really much is happening. Time. And then they're all kind of like, okay, handshake, handshake, handshake. We all ulted. It's, it's Everybody calm down. It's very much in the energy of like, did I get you? Ah, I didn't get you. I'll get you next time, though. I love it. Do you see this poke in the bot lane from this Karma Jinx lane starting to really come online? And one issue you have when you play Ezreal is that you have a lot of single target damage, mm -hmm. but you don't have a great wave clear. So something like Jinx and Karma can kind of abuse that and shove you, because right. Jinx obviously has rockets. Karma Q is very annoying in lane. Um, and they know Nocturne's top, so it's free push in bot lane. Great wards on uh, the side of the tree gang over here on the bot side. Very, mm -hmm. very well protected. We love to see that. Absolutely. Um, now, One I, thing to note, too. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I will say, I was just going to say, I'm surprised that uh, the Jinx Karma is, uh, I mean, literally earlier we saw the Ezreal Seraphine out poking them to quite an extent. So just another example of counter punches happening in this game. Yeah, and you can't underestimate what that Ocean Drake does for that lane also. Just that little bit of extra ticking of health every now and then can be the difference, you know? Um, those Ezreal Qs don't feel as impactful when, you know, every couple seconds you're ticking back a little bit of your missing health. Um, big thing too is that the gold is dead even despite the first blood. Mm. So not really where you'd want to be as tree gang, but there's still plenty of game to play. We're only 11 minutes in. You know they're really you know Nocturne at level 11 we get that tier two ult when it feels like half a map. Oh, looks like they're gonna oh fight. here we go Nocturne getting slowed down right there. Talia. I'll admit I looked away because I realized the objective timers weren't on. Okay, hold on. Praise the sun. There's a little bit damage. of trouble right here. Gosh, Talia knows what's up. Oh, my God. Going oh. forward with the ignite as well. Kigaris gets the kill. And a pause. Okay, so. It's not the mid lane. <laughs> Reading the chat, it's not because something happened mid lane with like a DC. That's all I wanted to be sure. Which is good because uh, LBLCS rules for all you fun, friendly folks out there. We say don't use pauses in a fight. So pause happened after the fight, which is good because obviously if it had paused a couple seconds earlier, Lissandra maybe could have done something to live. But speaking of Lissandra dying, that was smooth as hell from Talia. Yeah, great read on the fact that Lissandra was oom. Couldn't ult in return, couldn't ult herself to save, and just great play, just knowing the limits of the champion. And we said earlier... You know, that damage is going to start to tick up. She's got a blasting mod now, a finished lost chapter. So that combo hurts now. Absolutely. And just.